Hello everyone. Um, last time I did Oregon memes, it started with a really cheesy beginning. I'm not going to do that again. Don't worry. Um, but after a great success and positive results, I'd say, from Oregon memes 1, uh, now I'm going to do Oregon memes 2. So, Sandra, last time, I'm going to look at memes and hopefully we'll, we'll at least chuckle. And, um, yeah, I'll link the sources down below. So, off we go onto the first meme. Aristide Kavai Cool. He was a cool dude. He was a very cool dude. He had a very fun shop and he always used every last penny to make cool organs. He actually did. He would often kind of run out of money. Maybe I, maybe I could be part of the Kavai Cool uh, club here, I guess. Because I have here a um, 3D printed organ pipe. Yeah, I'm not kidding. This is an actual 3D printed organ pipe. I guess it's a Borden pipe. I don't know. I hear other names like Flautoplastique or Plastique Act. I don't know. It works though. Need some work, but I don't know. Future of organ building. We'll just start printing pipes. Oh boy. No voicing necessary. I actually didn't really have to voice it at all. It just kind of started to work. Anyway. Alright. Next one. Yep. Okay, I don't get why they're just flutes and bored in the background, but... Okay. I kind of see where this is going. Yeah, I, I think I get it. Because, like, the little chicks down there are supposed to be, like, they usually go with the trumpets. Typically in a French organ you'd have, um, like, your trumpets and bombards and clarions and mixtures and mutations would all be labeled in red and you'd activate it with the ventil pedal. And I think that's what they're getting at here, except we usually would kind of pull those little things out with the prestant. I don't know about the flute harmonique and the borden in the back, because that's kind of weird, but I kind of get it, because that would make your sort of cornet stop. Trumpet on shamad. Organ. Organist audience. <laughs> yes, that is... That is incredibly accurate. And it is something special to the trumpet on shamad. I know a lot of people out there like your tubas, but I am a shamad person. And this is sort of me as an organist in a nutshell, actually. Um, yeah, if you are not shooting at your audience and just blasting them away, you're not doing it right. And that's how it feels too. Unless the shamat's out of tune or it does something weird, then it doesn't quite feel right. But yeah, with the nice, good, loud, kind of crispy shamad, that's how it feels. It's, it's a very, very powerful feeling. For Christmas, I want a dragon. Be realistic. House organ with a contra bombard 32 foot. What color you want your drink? Ah, uh, well, you know, I don't actually know any organs in someone's house, like a pipe organ that has a 32 foot. But with hop brick organs, almost, I think just about anyone who has hop brick has a 32 foot now because of free sock, essentially. But yes, I'm very proud to have my 32 foot. I don't have the organ on, but insert 32 foot sound here. On Shamad, yes. Again, more Shamad memes. I, I think we need more Shamad, you know? Shamads are amazing. It's and it's not because they're all always super loud. Sometimes you just have a normal trumpet that's horizontal. It's not necessarily voiced special or under extra pressure. It's just being horizontal gives it this I like to use the word crispy. It's very crispy sounding, it's very clear. It, it doesn't take time to kind of come and to speak, it's boom, there is sound. That's something, that's just one of my favorite sounds, is the shaman. And it's not the volume, it's just the, the crispiness. It's kind of crunchy, you know? I, don't, I like it a lot. Now, on a real French organ though, a trumpet wouldn't really be a cute little cat playing with yarn. It would actually also be the fire breathing, whatever that is. But maybe on like, American organs, 
roasting myself here, but American organs a lot of the time, or I don't know, German organs, that might be more true. Great, perf great organ concert performance. Batteries are tuning. They will reeds, reeds tend to go out of tune more than flute pipes. Um, and they'll go out of tune for almost anything, um, especially air and especially, you know, a lot of churches don't keep the air conditioning or the heat on when it's not Sunday. Typical churches, they don't want to pay the bill to keep the heat up or whatever. As a result, reeds tend to go out of tune quickly um, because of the temperature difference. And when reeds are in bad tuning and the rest of the organs in tuning, they will remain a thorn in your side. Bad reeds are, you know, they're pretty bad. And I remember the reeds at my church organ were really bad during Christmas, during Christmas last year. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to tune them. So I got a little tuning experience. So if you don't want this to happen, learn how to tune reed pipes. So actually, you know, at least for being pipes that are always out of tune, at least the easiest to tune. There's just a little wire and you just tap it up and down. Super easy to do. Bombard 16, ambitious organ builder. Tiny <laughs> positive organ. Uh, I don't... I mean, if positive organ refers to a little, like, concert, like, um, chamber organ, I don't know about that. But, I mean, it's... I mean, every organ needs some big reeds. I mean, okay, there's, there's really two reasons I say every organ needs a big reed. One, well, every organ needs some power. It's true. I think every organ needs a, you know, some power. But the other thing is, bombards and the pedal in particular really help kind of bring the bass, and it can really... It's the larger repertoire. Little organs can play Bach, like, no problem. But when you want to start playing... Vidor and Vierne and even bigger things. A lot of organs can't do that because most of the time they lack pedal reeds. And a lot of times they may actually lack pedal stops altogether. Because they'll have like a 16 foot flute that's probably from the grate and is in the pedal. And that doesn't count. But yeah, ambitious organ builders, I like them. Just like Aristide Kavai Cool. Organist, tuba mirabilis, choir, haha. <laughs> um, I mean, the only thing I disagree with is again, tubas don't have that crispy sound shamads have. Although, if you're in England, then this is absolutely true because, you know, in England they like to put the organ like on either side, with the choir also on either side. So then it's a battle of which side is the tuba on. And then the tuba gets totally just messes up the choir later. It's totally, it's a lot of fun too. Tubas can totally wreck a choir or make them go deaf. I've seen, um, oh, I can't remember what it was. It, it was probably like Mahler 8th Symphony or something. And the tubas were in, it was actually in the choir division, in the, in the concert hall organ. And it was over sort of, well, I'm looking at the stage sort of to the right. And... And if you don't know how Mahler A begins, it's just, it's like pedal E flat and then a big E flat chord in the, in the organ. And then the choir comes in, it's huge. I mean, the Mahler A is amazing, but the organist came in and those choir members right there in front of the tubas jumped. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Oh, it was hilarious. And I mean, you'd think they'd be used to it after rehearsal, but I guess not. But it was, it was absolutely hilarious. But yeah, tubas. This, this, if, if organists are bored and we need a reaction out of choir members, that's what we do. Organist, I think I forgot something. Score. If you forgot, then it wasn't important. Organist, yeah, you're right. Memorize combination on sequencer. Yeah, registration can be tough. And actually, this is one thing. Organists need to practice a lot. Part one being working out all your notes. Part two is, and this is normally organ like the actual performing organ. So if I, um, if I were gonna go perform at like the National Cathedral, you know, I would practice here first, but then I have to spend hours upon hours picking registrations and picking, you know, the settings and, you know, when to hit the forward button and when not to. Um, there's so many things and you'd spend a lot of time just at the performance organ 
picking your stops and when to hit the forward sequencer or generals or whatever. And like, there's a lot that goes into all the funny business that's not here on the manuals. Me, Bach's organ repertoire, partitas, Pascalis, cross, fugues, preludes, toccata, and fugue in D minor. Ah. Well, that brings up a certain controversy in the organ world, I guess. Um, well, let's just, how should I put this? There are two kind of organists in this world. Those who like toccata and fugue in D minor, and those who don't. Um, as the, I, I've seen a shirt out there that says BWV 565 on it, with a big, like, not allowed symbol on it. I gotta disagree, I actually kinda like the Toccata and Fugue in D minor. I, I, the beginning of the Toccata is old. That's very old, and yeah, I will say, I'm kind of annoyed at that. But the Fugue, it's Toccata, Toccata's one thing, but the Fugue, I just really like that Fugue. I don't know why, but the Fugue is amazing. And everyone just doesn't care, they just go, oh, it's got the cringy commercial beginning to Halloween. It doesn't count now. I don't know. But I think every organist has at least gone through this before in their lifetime. So if you put like young me or me before I started really playing organ, that would be true. I mean, I think to a lot of organists now, including myself, that's not necessarily true as I'm looking at a lot of other Bach and stuff now and not really to count in Fugue D minor. There is hate out there for that piece. So this, this meme really kind of only applies to younger, less experienced organists. And then to kind of you kind of gets old and then you move on. But young me, that's true. And that's actually, that's pretty funny. Well anyway, that's all the memes I got for today. Hopefully you had a little laugh, a little chuckle, and if you had a bad day, hopefully now it's a good day. I don't know. Um, and uh, yeah, there will be more memes to come. So, uh, you know, like and subscribe, and I will see you all later.